first things I noticed was that Martin is um, is drunk, always doing the drunk act. Of and course. Um, the likeable Italian rogue, sort of bad boys, sitting on bar stools, drinking whiskey and smoking. And Sinatra is staring like hard into the middle distance and very sort of unflappable in his kind of woes. He's got his chin in his hand, hasn't he? He's he like, has. He's looking yeah. straight down at us. Yeah, and straight at us. Is he looking at us or is he just looking down? But like, he's definitely he's kind, kind of, of into the middle distance. I think he's just he like look, he, he looks more fed up. He's fed up. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely more fed up than uh, than Dean. Yeah, we see Dean looking off camera, waiting for the cue. Sinatra's kind of lovelorn, bereft, and pretty humorless like ice through the whole performance and it doesn't break the fourth wall no winks or smirks or anything he's like playing the straight man and Martin's doing the opposite basically well and they do do jokes but he, he does it sort forth. of deadpan though and whereas Martin's trying to get a rise out of him the whole time and Frank's just like nah it's like he knows something that Frank doesn't so he's probably basically sleeping with Frank's girl and he's kind of sharing this fact with the audience through his like buffoonish drunken lathered on communication style and uh, he's kind of creating the illusion that he's the most charming person on the planet at this moment. And he, all he has to do is, like, wink and make faces. And um, he's kind of sealing the connection with the audience with his gushing charisma. So you think that he is making contact with the audience? It's set up yeah. as in they're in the bar on their own. Yeah. And the camera goes down the ridiculously long bar with empty yeah. stools, empty ashtrays. They're right at the end. So it must be the end of the night because they've got the hats on. So this is last drinks time, isn't yeah. it? This... Yeah, yeah. But you were saying you think that Frank's more in the bar on his own and Dean's kind yeah. of, he knows that this is a performance. Yeah, and he's kind of nudging and winking and, go, and sort of telling the audience that he's been sleeping with Frank's girl by subtle little sort of signs. And Frank's just like oblivious and just kind of going, someone's sleeping with my girl, fuck. Oh, really? That's, that's the way I sort of read it, yeah. In other versions, it never says we. It's always sung by one person. Yeah. And it may have other people, like in another Sinatra version with the Tom Dorsey Orchestra, he has this vocal chorus called the Pied Pipers that commentate. They do little replies and stuff. Probably where they got the first idea, maybe it could be a duet. But here, this is the first time that I've heard it say the one we love belongs to somebody else. So yeah. that's, how, that's how they start it. So I'm putting them both together talking about the same girl. Exactly. And, and they both know, and she's fair game. They may be opposing each other, but in a jokey way. They're not, they're not that bothered who wins. So the actual original song was a 1924 foxtrot written by Isham Jones and Gus Khan. Gus Khan is the lyricist, but the actual first release of it was just the Isham Jones Orchestra. It was an instrumental dance track. For the Flappers in 1924. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. And the 78, it says, for dancing. And after the song name, it says, Foxtrot. So, mm. you know, you, you've got all your instructions there, how to enjoy this record. If you don't know <laughs> yourself, yeah. you know, just follow the instructions. Brilliant. I mean, well, they had set dances. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, just just mosh or, or like flap about, like a, well, maybe flap, but... Maybe flap. Sort of um, loll about, you know... With the, no. with the long jumper on and long hair, and it's that'd be funny if they did do if they did put like a, um, you know, uh, smells like Teen Spirit, and then in brackets mope or uh, mo- <laughs> mo- or mosh, yeah, mosh forward slash mope. It's a shame, really, because nice to have a bit of order, isn't it? In in, um, <laughs> in enjoyment, you, you like know? it? Yeah, a bit of. We know we all know this dance. We all practice it, and now we come here to uh, to show how good at it we are. It's a shortcut for the DJs in the record shop, isn't it? Say it dances. They maybe they didn't have the orchestra all the time, so they would have a gramophone and they'd have a selection of records. And they wanted a fox trot. They'd say, "Oh, here's a fox trot." Or it's just for at home, so you can put yeah. them in genres of uh, dance. Yeah, here's, and you got, can practice the dance at home. Waltzes together. I've got all my fox trots together. I've got yeah. all my bunny hugs together. Yeah, it was different sort of way of categorizing it. A few months later they released it with lyrics with Al Jolson singing. Al Jolson famous for the jazz singer and blackface. It was a very gay upbeat comedy song actually. Yeah, I, I, I'm liking your use of the word gay in you know, it's proper good old fashioned sense there. Yeah. 
released back then when that was how it was used. Yeah. The, the lyrics aren't exactly super gay. They're a little bit sad, aren't they? I think it's done as a bit of a joke. It's like he's a loser and we're all kind of like, oh, he's being all sorry for himself and pitiful. Mm. The Sinatra and Martin version totally cuts off the first verse. Right. Of the Jolson one. It only sings the chorus. Really? That's yeah. a big chorus. It's a long yeah. chorus with lots of different words in. The one we love belongs to somebody else. Yeah, in unison. Two big voices using uh, their power just to uh, flop out the, the chorus. <laughs> I don't know, it didn't come across as powerful to me, I didn't think. It's not a brilliant song, it's not a brilliant performance. I don't think there's much great about it. It seems very kind of just, uh, yeah, we can do this. I mean, there's no problem and it'll be fine. I mean, I thought it was fun the first few times I watched it and then I didn't really sort of think about it and then it just like popped into my head about four days later while I was in the library and I was just like, this is great, man. I've got to listen to this song. It's very classic. Yeah, it's classic and it's got all those kind of big band grooves that you expect from Sinatra and it just made me go, oh yeah, Sinatra, I used to like him when I was 18. Oh, did you? Yeah, but I mean, uh, like Elton or whatever, you've heard on jukeboxes, New York and all the big songs. Of course, songs, of course. And you've probably sung along drunkenly to them. Possibly, but I mean... Uh, at the end of the night, I would get bourbon. Would you sit at the bar with a hat on tipped over your brow? No, I didn't go that far. I'd just be singing it around the pool table and like prancing about. Yeah, more of a convivial, a more of a convivial song, like with, with yeah, other people. Yeah, I'd be the Dean Martin, really, not the Frank. She means her tender songs for somebody else. Ah, so she's a singer. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. why that's why it works in the Judy Garland show as well, because she's just sang a song and they're talking about her singing mm. these tender songs for somebody else. It work, That's why it works so brilliantly. Yeah. You should really watch the whole show. I watched another show last night, which was The Man and His Music, which, oh, fucking brilliant. So it was, it was interesting seeing him duet with um, other people as well. When he duets, it all seems to be about the other guy. They have to sort of come to him. He sticks on the audience and they kind of look at him a lot. He doesn't look at them so much. That was a bit like Conway and Loretta. Huh? Loretta was always yeah. engaged with the audience and Conway was kind of half engaged with the audience and half just looking at her for approval. Yeah. And it seems yeah. like that with Dean as well. Totally. So, like, Dean comes in with, And even when I've got my arms around her, I know her thoughts are strong for somebody else. He doesn't even say else. He yeah, goes, that bit. Oh. Because he, 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 <laughs> and then he burps so into his um, <laughs> He into always his does that. That's, like, that's the boozer joke, you know. Yeah. Ending the phrase with, like, a... Like he's going to be sick or something. <laughs> yeah, and he's kind of leaning into Frank when he's doing that. He's kind of, come on, Frank, yeah. And he, yeah. He's, he's not taking this too seriously. And Frank's well, maybe, like, that yeah, bit is, maybe that bit is like the more reminiscent of how you were singing Frank with your friends. You know, you're kind of singing it together and kind of leaning into each other and going... Aah! Exactly, yeah. Hitting the notes, yeah. We were more than kinda, Martin, yeah. He holds that else and he pronounces it like... He holds it in his throat. It's like, <laughs> he does. He's such a strange, he's such a strange oh, no. singer. Because like Frank has amazing vocal technique, and Dean, it just I don't know. I was just thinking of them like the quality. Frank is like this hard wood, this deep, rich mahogany, mm. you know, um, yeah. that's been growing for years and years and years, and just getting stronger and stronger. And mm. Dean is like the veneer that you find on top of chipboard. You know, it's like he's, <laughs> yeah. he's just thrown onto things, and it's always the same. It doesn't matter what type of music like we had with the country song. So he doesn't change. You just throw him onto any kind of backing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. I feel like he's the vocal equivalent of the um, the guy in Robocop that gets covered in toxic waste and then the car <laughs> like <laughs> just goes straight through and he just explodes everywhere. Uh, just with his <laughs> lip, huge lips and like... Sylvester Stallone in Rocky when he's like going... Whatever her name is. And well, he was a boxer, wasn't he? Is... He was a boxer, wasn't he? And he had Dean like Martin a bro- was a boxer, of course. Yeah, and he, okay, he, had like a, yeah. he had like a broken nose. So he, he had plastic surgery on his nose back in like the 40s or something, maybe even, yeah, really early, like before, mm. his, before his TV career with uh, Jerry Lewis. So he had like surgery to kind of, because it does sound a bit nasally. Yeah, it does sound exactly like Sylvester Stallone in Rocky, so that must be the boxer's kind of 
I've been punched in the nose sound. Yeah, but it's funny that his type of singing is much more uh, mimicked. If you watch old geezers singing in a bar, like on karaoke, mm. they'll do the... Uh, like, yeah. that Dean does. No one can get close to Frank. Like, it's probably you know. a lot fucking easier to do that. Well, Frank. yeah. Yeah. Because it is a Frank veneer. Frank is so sharp. Yeah, it's a veneer. And that's easy to create. The oak is hard won. And, but it's very sharp and very sort of... Um, it's like a politician or something, almost. Very well-spoken in his Yeah, uh, and very well. Singing. Everything is so very super... articulated, s- fucking... And like, the timing crisply. is immaculate. Yeah. It's, he hangs on, the, like, sounds, like consonants... For a while, for much longer than you should. Yeah, like uh, yeah. all or nothing at all when he goes, Oh, nothing at all. Yeah. Because he, he learned his learned his breath control from Tom Dorsey, trombonist. Right. Because Tom Dorsey used to be able to do these really long phrases and Frank was like, how the fuck does he do that? Like, Where is he getting his breath mm. from? Just looking at him one day, going, like, couldn't figure it out. And then he saw that this, this tiny little hole in the side of his mouth that he was like taking air in through. And like Frank kind oh. of took took that on himself mm. so he could do long phrases and mm. not have to breathe as much or he, he just, yeah he worked on his breath control he's like he's, he's such a student and uh yes. and, yeah and he's he becomes a master and like he is yeah. a master of his art what's interesting <laughs> is just how upfront all the mechanics of what he's doing are on camera and how up close especially this older older frank that i was talking about that i watched last night mm. like there's all you can see him doing all this weird stuff with his mouth and like his eyes and it's it's not necessarily pretty it's kind of almost vulgar you're watching a machine mm. working he's going through all the, his learning all everything he's learned he's going through all yeah, the, the but it's not the, the sort of freeze frame photographs that you sort of imagine when you're listening to it and not watching it it's like something a lot more sort of grotesque but he's getting amazing results out of it he, he he looks quite scary actually in this seventies one. His eyes just keep like looking sort of pin black, kind of, and his teeth. And it, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was kind of disgusting me and fascinating me last night watching it. He makes out sort of like frames of a woman as he's singing about a woman, and he's <laughs> right. kind of doing this fucking hour the silhouette. Class silhouette. It's kind of horrific because it gets pretty it, towards really crude, but then just pulls back. But he doesn't like, start like jabbing his finger, does he? Like after he's oh, made the silhouette, he jabs his finger a lot. Like not uh, during the silhouette, not straight during, after the silhouette, that would be too much. Just <laughs> straight into the silhouette. No, <laughs> not long after though. I mean, close enough to make the connection. Hourglass, you know, top bit, hourglass bottom bit, and then he sort of puts his hands down like he's massaging someone. He's, oh god, it's, it's really weird. And then he sort of just flaps his hands up, and. He just looks like Jokerish. He's got this weird grin. It looks like the Joker. It really <laughs> does for a fraction of a second, and then it's back to cheesy grin and sort of elegant dreamer. Um, but like oh, a little so bit of Joker you, here and there. And you do have a little um, insight into the the darkness that lies beneath. Definitely, when the, in the seventies it's colour or whatever, and it's quite close up, and he's a bit older, and it's a bit yeah. But, it, but, you know, then he just takes it away from that with his performance. There's a story in every line, that's what I was thinking. The way he does his facial expressions and everything. And he, right. yeah, he t- tells it with his gestures and his clothes and eyes yeah, yeah. as much as with his voice. He's the ultimate performer, isn't he? He is. I mean, I mean, he's doing this acting, basically, at the same time as performing this fucking mechanical fucking brilliance of the actual mm. the singing and, like... And then he's got the, and so that's why the sort of goggle eyes and this weird slanted jaw jabs that he does that are kind of aggressive and jabbing of the finger, like we said, like direct at the camera. It's like, is that nice? Why do that? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I feel like you're my dad telling me off. But I think this kind of ugliness was more acceptable in the 60s. Vulgarity, sleaze. It's kind of more real. Everything's airbrushed these days, isn't it? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> be analysed for every single thing nowadays in every performance. You would, you'll be analysed for everything. Would be everywhere. And it'll be gift. It'll be gift. Uh, so just these two sitting there, how subtle their movements are, and how comfortable they are in front of the camera, and how they mm. know almost like every little tiny little gesture is being conveyed to the masses, and they're confident in that. And like they're actors, aren't they? I mean, as well as singers and. 
they've good, been they've good been with in the mo- camera movies and TV for years. Both of yeah, them. yeah. It's quite rare for me to watch performances by people in this way that are kind yeah. of um, not just giving it all, you know, and prancing about and. Oh right, yeah. It's very relaxed. Know. Yeah, it's, it's very relaxed. Obviously, like Frank Sinatra's senior style is all about that as well, like the close mic talking mic technique he realized that the microphone was his instrument and a lot of singers didn't realize this for a long time and he said some don't even now and he's talking like in the 50s or something this is our instrument we got to you know before microphones were available he would use a, like a loud hailer you have to sing as loud as possible or you sing in a higher register to yeah. say you get heard over the music and yeah. so it was the microphone that kind of made this new singing available to performers and he kind mm. of really took that on and pushed it that's the thing these 60s 50s recordings just sound pretty crystal they were top of the pops weren't they so they yeah. get all the all the best technology all the best arrangers conductors recording in the best rooms with the best orchestras the best musicians yeah. you know it's gonna sound good isn't it if it doesn't sound good then what's the point yeah yeah he was like pre-beatles like the first pop star really wasn't he yeah kind yeah. of yeah. He, had, he had his Sinatrix, like the Screaming Girls. Oh, the Swoon Archers. He was called Swoon Archer. That was one of his nicknames. Oh, the, yeah. During his first wave. Because, like, he had the Bobby Soxers with the girls that would come and scream. Yeah. And they had, like, loads of fan clubs. Like, they had the Sighing Society of Swooning Sinatra Slaves. They had oh. loads of these crazy named fan clubs. Mm. I don't know if he was the first kind of teen sensation. I think I think he was. Mm-hmm. And um, he's gathered steam and become this um, icon. He's not Swoon Archer anymore. He's the chairman of the board now. That's his new nickname yeah. at, this, at this point. Yeah. But Il Padroni is one as well, isn't it? Is it? But the best nickname that was given to Frank Sinatra mm. was by Orson Welles on the Frank Sinatra roast. Yeah. Where he calls him um, history's first finger-snapping pope. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Secret Service had a nickname for him. Because he used to mm. do all this work with um, the Kennedy and uh, campaign, and his code name was Napoleon, right? <laughs> Which is pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, pretty good. Because it's like apt. you know, he shares the, the the boundless ambition and self belief of an emperor, and he does become an emperor of his own coterie, doesn't he? Yeah, and he's kind of just as megalomaniacal and yeah. um, bad tempered. Yeah, uh, and and he's um, pretty small, isn't he? Or he looks pretty small. small. Yeah, I think he's pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because he, he used to get beaten up when he was little because he, Cause he was a bit was weedy. Little. Yeah, because he was a weedy. Yeah, if you so look at, like, the old performances, like, when he was the Swoon Archer, he's like, he just looks so tiny. He's this big bobble head. Yeah. His I'm, body is so skinny and, yeah, it just like, it looks so silly in those suits. Yeah, I'm sure they um, they do a lot of, like, sort of Tom Cruise-type camera work to make him look a lot bigger in the later... Possibly, yes. yeah, possibly. Well, yeah. yeah, he would have had so much control. Yeah, and he, he's often like, I mean, obviously here he's with Dean, but he's often filling the camera. Just, it's, he's the only one there, and he. Well, it's, it's all, all about, about the personality. The it's all about the performance yeah. and the personality, isn't it? It's like yeah. there is. It's not about the uh, dancing girl. I mean, he does end up doing some of that stuff in the late sixties when he's like go-go dancers and like more kind of variety show stuff where there'd be lots yeah. of stuff going on. But yeah, his his best stuff or the stuff he's remembered for is yeah this more kind of like it's just about the performance. You know, maybe even the the orchestras would be kind of slightly in the dim. You know, and it would just be the spotlight mm. on Sinatra. And the hands I hold belong to somebody else, don't they belong to her? She borrowed them. Yeah, and that's the-, <laughs> the back and the back and forth. Yeah, that's the first time Frank really acknowledges that Martin's there. Like, she borrowed them. Just, just shut up. I'm having my downer. Leave me alone. I'm yeah. lamenting here. Like, but, but you're also you having buffoon. your. But you're no. But he lets him have his downer as well. You know that he has a little break and Dean will do a line or two. But Martin doesn't yeah. care. No, nah, no, he doesn't care as much. That's for sure. No. Yeah. He it's, takes the piss as well, isn't he? He's got. He like, takes the piss. Yeah. He has a line like, "We've got a tearful story." kind of taking the piss out of Frank yeah there but I think he's laughing then, at himself as well it's always been part yeah. of his of his shtick yeah and then he's like very sad but 
That's a more. What is that voice? He's kind of taken well, this. He's, t- he's taken this out, Italian... of his, out of himself. That's his. He yeah. did that song. He made that song his own. Really. Okay. That was one of his big yeah. hits. Like, right. Yeah. And Frank's like, "You're so Italian. Like, yeah. shut up." Okay, and that's where yeah. that's where Frank kind of loses the. Um, he gets out of sync with the song, and he has to kind of play catch up because he's like putting, right. he's putting in these little lines like. You're so Italian, and then the, the 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 new the new lines already started, and he's like, uh, uh, even when <laughs> yeah. I have to put my arms around, yeah. yeah. But he catches up. He doesn't make he it does. sound shit. Yeah. He makes, you know, he's, no, he's I didn't even realise that. She didn't even leave a note. <laughs> you can't read anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty uh, but, turgid jokes. Yeah, but t- towards the end, so he says. I bet they're not so cold for somebody else. For somebody else. And he rises up the note and he sort of rises as well and becomes suddenly proud at that point. Um, but this is Frank or Dean? And this is, no, this is <clears throat> Dean. And mm. this is the point where I think this is him saying, I'm pretending like that I'm lamenting, but actually I am sleeping with your girl. Uh-huh. Because he's like, for somebody else, it's me, he's saying. And he sort of gets up and all proud and... Uh, well, he goes for the high note, doesn't he? He goes for the big note at the end, whereas Frank kind of goes else. for... And then Frank just kind of goes, somebody else. Yeah. Goes lower. And then they turn around and it's, put their backs it's, to the audience and they yes. look they look off. But then it cuts. But in the actual full TV show, um, the light comes on and they're looking at Judy Garland and the camera goes past their heads and she goes into a song on her own. Yeah, it's it's opened me up to a whole, a whole new world, actually. This kind of um, these programs that I've never really watched before, um, yeah, that are highly choreographed, like musical trips. Yeah, well, they are working and with the best based, people in the business, aren't they? All based on these performers. You know, they're showing their sensitive side, but it's really a way to look super attractive to girls. Right, you think it's all um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, underhanded? Yeah, it's really underhanded. They're just like <laughs> pretending just to get into girls knickers like yeah which is what they did a lot of the time so there's a sort of charming little little bit of vulnerability shown Hmm. but nothing sort of sickening or like grotesque or off-putting like actual vulnerability can be they're like yeah 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 (laughs) yeah they're not gonna let themselves get they're gonna do it with some restraint and dignity totally like they're still cats like yeah cads or whatever it's an act, but it's one that's quite useful, I have to say. <laughs> I reckon I've used this act, like yeah. the, doe eye, the doe eyes, as a man. Oh, I've sure. used this act, yeah. yeah. Like, sometimes you're like, oh, God, I'm really in the shit now. <sighs> oh, yeah, I just do the doe eye thing, actually, and go... Yeah, the, self, the self-pity. The self-pity thing. I mean, that self-pity actually never works for me. But doe eye... Kind of, oh, it could yeah. work with someone. It can work with someone yeah, new. That's true. Yeah, it gets. It will get old. Wife. <laughs> you know, yeah, it gets. It gets <laughs> old with in wife. a relationship. Yeah. yeah, I'd say this is like, as a model of sort of masculinity. They, these these guys like set the model for like decades, like the Mad Men, cigarette smoking, hard drinking, but sensitive. Yeah, man, they created that in a way, that archetype. Yeah, along with Hollywood. It's better than the vulnerability of revealing the filthy chasm of self-hatred inside yourself. That can be very off-putting. Yeah. It's weird that Radiohead seemed to get a massive career out of it. Yeah, but did they get the chicks? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea. Well, I mean, they weren't known. Probably. They weren't known for it, were they? No. I haven't heard any sort of shower stories. From the sort of notorious OK computer orgies. <laughs> These are unash- unashamedly women's men, men's, no, men's men, men's men, women's men. I don't know what you call it. Men's but men. Like, but they're unashamedly yeah. going for the chicks. I watched a lot of Dean Martin Celebrity Roast. A lot of the jokes are based around their womanising, hard drinking, and um, with Frank in particular about his violence, you know, towards photographers and the media. Yeah. Um, Dean being the bimbo, being too drunk, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, girls and drink is the main jokes. You know? Yeah. And he's very attractive to the opposite sex, it seems. He, he gets a lot of uh, action. Well, old, both uh, of them. And Dean. Yeah, of course they all do. I mean... I think later on, I think Dean was like, probably more attractive. Okay. Maybe in a fun way. I don't know. Maybe, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. He looks, he's, a bit, he looks... he's a bit more fun, maybe. Sinatra's a little bit of a... Intense. He's intense. Yeah. 
It's, yeah, it's intense. The other option for their duet would have been probably Marshmallow World from the um, Christmas show, which was <laughs> Dean's family and Frank's family together. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, and they did a couple of duets, like Frank and Dean did a duet to start it off. Yeah, maybe two duets, uh, two quartets, but the big one... <laughs> oh, the big one. The biggest news for this podcast is that there was a medley of Christmas songs that brought all of the family members together. First, Dean introduces all the family, the clan litter or the the rat spawn, like all of them are there. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got Frank, Dean, Janine, Craig, Nancy, Gail and Tina, Dina, Gina, Claudia, Ricky and Dean and Frank Juniors. Mm. 13. So what does that make okay. it if 13 are singing together? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to get me to say, like, the word. No, no. <laughs> no. So 12... Oh, 12 is a duo deset, right? Hey, well done. So what's uh, 13? A trio deset. Well, no. Ah. It should be. It should be. It should be. Shit. But they actually cut off at 12. They don't go anymore. There and then after that... There's no name. They... No, it's a choir or a orchestra, a chamber orchestra or a symphonetta or something like that. Oh. 13 people. I mean, it's a choir, isn't it? It's a choir. It, w- it would have been fun to do the Christmas one. But um, yeah. it's not Christmas. It's not Christmas and it's not as good a song. The Marshmallow World is fucking horrible. Ah. I, I've got a quiz for both of us, actually. It's more of a sort of psychological evaluation. I hope you don't mind. Go on, then. Um, Go for it. How much like Sinatra am I is the title of the quiz. So, I got a question. Have you ever used doe eyes to garner attraction from the opposite sex? Uh, <laughs> uh, prob- probably. I, just, I, can't, I can't think of a, a, an actual instance, but um, no, I think I'm, I prob- must. I must have. I think I probably have. I've as well. Well, like, like we said, like we said, we've used self pity before to kind of. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I mean, uh, not maybe not Everyone knowingly. No, maybe yeah, not, not knowingly. knowingly. No, no, the, not knowingly. Uh, no, no, no. No, no but at knowingly. the time, maybe not knowingly. N- now looking back thinking, well, you know, that's part of our character. We probably did do that. It's sort of knowingly, subconsciously. It's yeah. part of everyone's character. So yeah. Happy. Yeah, a bit of that. Are you fiercely protective of those who are loyal to you and fierce to those who are disloyal? No. No. I'm not fierce in general. You can be a bit fierce. I'm again. not. I'm not. I'm not super. I'm not super reactionary. No, I'd say I probably am. I don't know if I'm fierce though. I'm probably not fierce. I probably think fiercely. You're not very fierce. Not fierce. I know. Yeah. I would say I'm quite protective. And so, yeah, do you value loyalty? Where Where would you put loyalty as a sort of attribute in terms of who you choose to be friends with? Mm, it more kind of plays itself out over time. You you just end up being with people that are loyal. You don't kind of. Yeah. It's not like you go, you go in with a um, thought of if this person fucks me over, I'm off. You know, it's like more if that does happen, well, maybe I'll be off. But like, yeah, I, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't have it as a um, set of prerequis- a prerequisite yeah, for friendship for, for, for friendship. Yeah, no, like a tick list. I wouldn't say. No, I wouldn't say so. No. no. I think I do value... I definitely value loyalty. I really value loyalty. Um, yeah. So am I, am I falling into the Dean categorization? Perhaps, You're perhaps. Yeah, I'm, into... I'm maybe falling into Sinatra. Yeah. I'm probably a bit more easygoing than you. I don't know, though. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, sir. I'm, I'm pretty uh, easygoing as well on Ooh. the surface. But his loyalty stuff, he, apparently he's very values loyalty and it, it comes into his politics and stuff as well like, oh well which yeah. we may as well go on to he was loyal to jack kennedy wasn't jack he? jack kennedy yeah he struck up a beneficial you know friends with benefits kind of situation i think yeah. with these two yeah but so, he, he was quite passionate as well about civil rights and he, oh yeah all that stuff yeah. and his mum was sure. um democrat and a politician 
I think the Friends with Benefits was more lies on the Kennedy side than the Sinatra mm. side. Yeah. Definitely Joe Kennedy, the patriarch, the leader of the Kennedy clan, used Sinatra yeah. to get Jack Kennedy into power. He uh, pressurised Sinatra to talk to his mob friends, if mm. we can call it that, to help him win the vote in certain areas, you know, get the unions to push for voting for Kennedy, you know. And then as soon as Kennedy got in, Jack Kennedy put Bobby Kennedy as his attorney general mm. and Bobby Kennedy uh, went straight for the mob. Yeah, and this was um, very disloyal and caused Sinatra to perhaps switch allegiance later on. Like, the funniest story is when Sinatra had built a whole new section of his house and a helicopter pad and everything in his grounds mm. and it was really made up about, you know, oh, Jack's going to come and stay here when he has to be in California. And uh, in the end... He was snubbed. Jack went and stayed with Bing Cosby, mm. and <laughs> who was a Republican, citing FBI concerns because of the um, alleged connections to organised crime. Mm. Even though Bing Cosby had alleged connections to the mafia as well, but they were less publicly known. Right. So Sinatra fucking lost his lid and uh, smashed up the heliport and <laughs> the extensions to his house. And if you wished you could see footage of Frank throwing this huge paddy, mm. well, unfortunately you can't. But if I told you there was a recreation of that home smash depicted mm. in a 1998 TV movie called The Rat Pack, mm. which actor of the time, so 1998, known for his Italian-American roles, would mm. you cast as Frank to do this home smashing? <laughs> OK. Um Known for his Italian-American roles. Uh, well, it can be just, like, one of a few, I suppose. Ray Liotta, Robert yeah. De Niro. Ray, Ray Liotta, Liotta, yes. You got it, first time. <laughs> and he does in the Rat Pack TV movie. Oh, it's brilliant. fucking oh. brilliant. Oh, Check it out. Good, yes. Got to watch that. Shit. Mm. Mm. He kept his name, and people were trying to tell him to change his name because it's too Italian-American. Oh, really? Sinatra, yeah. And like Dean oh, Martin did, what, was Dean. Yeah, Dino, yeah. He was... Crocchetti. Crocchetti, yeah. Very Italian-American. They were, he was Dino like, no, Crocchetti. Yeah. to Martin. Yeah. Martin. He's like, no, keeping Sinatra. The difference is Sinatra was uh, making it big in New York, mm. whereas Martin was in the middle of America. He was in Ohio. So it probably made a bit more of a difference. There was a lot of racism to Italians. Well, there was. That's, yeah. that's uh, Frank's own name that he gave himself, Top Wop. Mm. Exactly. And on the B side of the original release of this song, the dance song, is another foxtrot called Wop Blues. So Wop was being thrown around a lot. Yeah. So um, goodbye, yeah. Dean. Yeah. Goodbye, Dean. Thank you, yeah. Dean. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> you honestly, honestly, bastard. the thing I've got to thank Dean for is mm. getting me into his celebrity roast, which is, I think, his perfect vehicle. And that's where Dean does his best work is when he's doing little gags he's entertaining mm. a big crowd i like dean you, you gotta like dean you gotta have a dean oh yeah you hated rap. dean in the first episode <laughs> <laughs> you know, i hated what he was changed. doing to country music and i hated his no well, you were like no then. i've got a problem with dean i've got a problem with dean i'll tell you oh, i'll tell you <laughs> yeah but i was basing that purely on that performance in that song no you weren't you were not i was basing it i, I didn't know him you Otherwise, weren't much. you were saying oh no i've got a problem with dean so who's next? Um, we're going with Frank, and we're going to fast forward to 2008. <laughs> and we're going to... Yeah, we're going Fuck. to 2008. Yeah, yeah. And oh, we're doing a song with Alicia Keys Not and even Frank. fast-forwarding anymore. We're just, like, Real, clicking. Well, I mean, fast-forward... I mean, fast we're fast-forwarding forwarding up to about 2000, and then we're skipping. And then we're skipping from then yeah, on. We're yeah, we're skipping, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so we're skipping to... A song called Learning the Blues... Oh, God, with Frank my Sinatra God, this sounds terrible. and Alicia Keys. And it's another TV performance. Oh, OK. On yeah. which programme? Well, I guess we'll find on out. Where Does Alicia Live? I don't know. New on York? the Grammys? Okay. <laughs> yeah, in Grammy World. Yeah, just in getting, Grammy World? Getting Grammys, yeah. We're going to Grammy World. OK. <laughs> and it's 2008, and Frank died in 1998, so I don't know how we're doing this, but we're doing it. What? 2008? How we do? Oh my God! Not through AI, or whoa, like, whoa, or whoa, through uh, some whoa. sort of uh, digital technological hijinks. marvel. <laughs> <laughs> digital hijinks, technological marvels. 
It's all to come in the next episode. It's all to come. I'm so I called to grow. I kind of wait. Bye. Not, not the next episode, the next part. Next part. Final part. The final part of episode three. The completion of the wheel. Yeah. She means her tender songs for somebody else. <laughs>